Today, signs that US credit growth is turning to the deep freeze. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news. Today, I want to discuss some data out of the US because, of course, the US economy has been supported by significant credit growth for many years. Indeed, many economies around the world, including Australia, are in the same boat. So it's quite interesting to read the results of a recent survey that's just come out that highlights the fact that credit growth is, well, going nowhere. Now, the data relates specifically to Texas, and I guess you can question whether Texas is typical or atypical of the broader US economy, but to my mind, it is a very important leading indicator and continues to highlight to me the likelihood of a recession in the US with all the consequences of that down the track. So they found that loan demand declined for the fifth period in a row, as bankers in the March survey reported worsening business activity. Loan volumes fell, driven largely by a sharp contraction in consumer loans. Loan non-performance increased slightly overall, they said, with the only notable rise over the past six weeks coming from consumer lending. Credit standards and terms continued to tighten sharply, and marked rises in loan pricing were also noted over the reporting period. Banking outlooks continued to deteriorate, with contacts expecting a contraction in loan demand and business activity and an increase in non-performing loans over the next six months. Some contacts cited waning consumer confidence from recent financial instability as a concern. Data was collected between March the 21st and the 29th, and 71 financial institutions responded to the survey. The Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas conducts the Banking Condition Survey twice each quarter to obtain a timely assessment of activity at banks and credit unions headquartered in the 11th Federal Reserve District. CEOs or senior loan officers of financial institutions report on how conditions have changed for indicators such as loan volumes, non-performing loans and loan pricing. And respondents are also asked to report on their banking outlook and their evaluation of general business activity. Survey responses are used to calculate an index for each indicator, and each index is calculated by subtracting the percentage of respondents reporting a decrease or tightening from the percentage reporting an increase or easing. When the share of respondents reporting an increase exceeds the share reporting a decrease, the index will be greater than zero suggesting the indicators increase over the prior reporting period. If the share of respondents reporting a decrease exceeds the share reporting an increase, the index will be below zero, suggesting the indicator has decreased over the period over the prior reporting period. An index will be zero when the number of respondents reporting an increase is equal to the number reporting a decrease. And here are some comments from respondents who completed the surveys and they've been edited for publication. The macro impact of the failure of Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank and Credit Suisse plus the downgrades of several regional banks has resulted in a crisis of confidence in our banking system. The additional macro impact of interest rate hikes has put the economy in a hard landing recession, in my opinion. Another one. I think Texas will be isolated to a degree from the slowdown and commercial real estate issues that will affect many major metro markets on both coasts. Another one. Financial uncertainty in the marketplace and lack of consumer confidence are issues of concern. And a run on any Texas bank would be catastrophic. The system is just not built to withstand any pressures like Silicon Valley Bank experienced. I believe we need the markets to settle down, bring trust back to the regional banks and do a complete autopsy on Silicon Valley Bank. There are some lessons to be learned. And the effects of rising interest rates on balance sheets are a concern 
as our recent bank failures in the news and the possibility of contagion, the rising debt of the federal government and other possible banking failures internationally. Our commercial customers are having sticker shock when, they, when their three or five year rate adjustments are coming due. Pricing for good commercial loans is getting very competitive and also, they said, we're fortunate to be in a still growing market. Now, the point I want to make on all of this is that it gives you a good flavor of what's really going down on the ground. The bottom line is this. We know that whilst consumer lending has actually grown quite considerably in the US and indeed has replaced the savings that people had previously post COVID, that is going to get more and more difficult to sustain because, of course, interest rates are a lot higher. And overall, lending is going to continue to grind lower. That is a very strong signal in terms of a potential recession. And as I said earlier, while well, Texas might be a one-off, but to me, this is a very significant indicator of more likely trouble ahead. And I guess the Fed will be taking this into account when they make their next decision with regard to rates. But more and more people out in the market are beginning to say that a recession is all but baked in in the US and certainly these credit indicators would reconfirm that. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.